All right, this is number four from the 2010 AP Physics B exam. It is a thermodynamics problem. We're dealing with a locomotive uh, steam engine. Uh, we know the power output and we know its efficiency. And A wants us to determine the rate at which heat is being delivered to the steam engine. So if we remember the, a, the equation for efficiency, your efficiency equation will always be the energy we get out divided by the energy we put in, and that's going to be heat energy. Well, we don't want to know the work done. We don't want to know the heat put in. We want to know the rate in which heat is being delivered. So we, we want to know the rate in which this guy is being delivered. But the rate in which any energy is done is power, and that's going to be the energy term over time. Well, since time is going to be below both, and it's the same time, we can quite literally just say the efficiency is the power out, divided by the power put in. Okay, the difference between that will be your efficiency. Because we were provided with the power output, at this point in time, it's just going to be simple rearranging. So what I'm looking for, the power that I'm putting in, the power being delivered, is going to be equal to the power I'm taking out, and I'm going to divide that by my efficiency. However, we don't want to divide by the percentage of efficiency. So our output power is 4.5 by 10 to the 6 watts. The efficiency, instead of me putting 12%, I've got to put one, uh, 0.12. And that's going to give me a power output of 3.8 by 10 to the 7 watts. Which makes sense. It needs to be larger than the input. 10 to the 7 is definitely going to be larger than 10 to the 6. All right, B. We want to determine the magnitude of the resistive forces acting in the locomotive when it's moving at a constant speed. So basically that means the power going in is going to match the power coming out to make it move at constant speed. Or the force in one direction will equal the force in the opposing direction. Again, it needs to be in equilibrium, basically. So we can take a look at this fancy equation. Power equals force times velocity. We know the velocity. We know the power. We're going to solve for the force. So the force can be the power divided by the velocity. And we're going to use the power that's coming out because that's the power that the engine is pushing the locomotive along with, and that's going to be the force forward, and that's going to be canceled out by the resistive forces. So the power out is what I've got to use up here, or the given power from the start. I'm going to divide that by the 7 meters per second, and I'm going to go ahead and get a force of 6.4 times 10 to the 5 newtons. Now C, suppose the gas in another heat engine follows this ABCDA path in the PV diagram below, and it takes uh, it's a rate of four cycles for every given second. First and foremost, what does the area bounded by the graph represent? This is just a concept. You need to know it. The area of a PV graph will always be the work, so that's what we're looking for. We're literally just looking for one word, work. Uh, E, or C2 wants us to actually calculate the power output of the engine. So, you know, remember, power is going to be work over time. So, it's two tasks here determine the work and determine the time. Let's get to the time part. If we have four cycles in a given second, that's the frequency. Time is going to be the inverse of that, or 0 0.25 seconds, or the time for one cycle. Your work is going to be the area, the area within this rectangle. So one leg times the other leg. So we're going to do 0.4 times 2 by 10 to the 5. 0.4 times 2 by 10 to the 5. Let's go ahead and write that out. 0.4 cubic meters times 2 by 10 to the 5 newtons per square meter, or pascals is fine. We're going to divide that whole thing by 0.25 seconds. We're going to get a total power of 3.2 by 10 to the 5 watts. And that is the power output of this heat engine during this cycle. And then part D, we need to figure out all of the stages in which heat is being added to the, to the gas itself, added to the gas, okay? So we've got this process here. I'm going to tell you which two are the right two. It's A, B, and B, C, and I'm going to explain why.
No, we don't necessarily have to. It doesn't say justify or explain. So we just need to indicate both. A, B, heat is being added. First and foremost, you got to understand that we're going to a higher temperature. We're, we're at a higher isotherm up here. If we have a bunch of isotherms, okay, A is definitely a lower temperature. B is a higher temperature. So its internal energy must be going up. Well, your change in internal energy has got to be that work plus that heat. Well, there's no work done here. The volume isn't changing. Thus, it has to be equal to the heat. And since the energy is going up, we must be adding heat. A very similar method of thinking will be from B to C as well. C is also at a higher, higher isotherm, so we know the internal energy is also getting higher from B to C. But there is work being done. The volume, though, is expanding. That means the gas is doing work. So that means the work being done is actually trying to drive the internal energy down. So not only do we need heat to make up for that change in internal energy that we're losing while it's doing work, but we also need to add even more heat to bring it to a higher energy level, higher uh, internal energy. So A, B, and B, C work, uh, or I'm sorry, gas is being, heat is being added to the gas. C, D, and D, A, there's no heat being added to the gas. All right, that's it for this wonderful, fancy thermodynamics problem. Thank you.